In this episode, we start the Shaman Grind full time in search of the Dragon Warhammer, the 1 in 5,000 drop that you can get from a Lizardman Shaman. So, I am at the new place that came out recently with the release of Kebbles Lowland um, in the area called the Moch, which is Western Zaya and uh, also south of the Raids area. And uh, underground is the Shaman Temple. There are three rooms in the temple with two shamans each. The Shaman Temple is most likely going to be the best spot for me to camp for the Warhammer because the other two areas that existed before it have a lot of problems. So the Canyon spot is a nice spot, uh, potentially the most kills per hour because it's multi three shamans and you can cannon it. However, that spot is very competitive, so unless you're in like a very high skill total world, you're most likely going to get crashed, especially if you're an Iron Man. So yeah, you're not going to have a good time there. And the other spot is the Slayer Cave, and unfortunately, as the name suggests, you have to be on a Slayer task. And it is very inconvenient to constantly try to do Slayer just for a Shaman task, especially if you're just trying to get the Warhammer fast as possible, like me. So this is where the temple comes in. It's singles, so no way you can have someone steal your kill. And it's also non-slayer task required. So I can just come here and kill shamans whenever I want. So these Lizardman Shaman are exactly the same as the Lizardman Shamans in the other places in terms of the drops. However, graphically and their size is not the same. So that means it has a, a slightly different behavior uh, in terms of how they do their jumping attack which I'll explain right now. So typically, if you are next to a wall, the Lizardman Shamans can't jump. However, the ones in the temple, they can still jump if you are in the wrong uh, side of the walls in terms of the uh, cardinal directions. So what I mean by that is, if you're on the wall that is uh, to the east of you or to the north of you, the Shaman in the temple can still jump. And if you are on the wall or any of the sides that is south of you or west of you, the shamans cannot jump. A lot of people thought that the shaman temple sucked because you couldn't stop them from jumping. But as I've shown you, it's really easy to stop them from jumping. There are also a few really awesome things about the shamans in the temple area that makes it better than the rest. So another thing to observe is that these rooms in the temple are really small. And what that means is, for somebody like me with a blowpipe, I never really have to worry about my character getting dragged out of the wall, because even if the shaman goes to the furthest part of the room, I can still typically reach it with a blowpipe. So I'm always near the wall, next to the wall, and they can't jump anyways. And another really cool thing about these shamans is that their barneys, I just call them barneys, like their uh, purple explody boys, their explosion range is a lot smaller. So the barneys in the other places, their explosion range is, um, I would say, a two by two. What that means is you have to be two squares apart from an exploding barney or else you would take damage. Here is the best part. You only have to be one square away from them. So that means kiting them, moving around while attacking the shaman with like a blowpipe is super easy. So I don't have to move around as much as I normally would to avoid the damage from the barneys. And this is amazing because the other areas in order to maximize your kills per hour to the best of your ability you have to actually bring staminas and uh, energy potions. Here, you don't have to. I can run the whole time 24-7 without drinking a single energy potion. Just because I don't have to run away from the Barneys as far. In my first few trips, I was clocking in around 120 Shaman kills an hour, which is insane if you think about it. And it doesn't change too much. Like, I was consistently clocking 120-ish kills. So that's a phenomenal. Overall, I would say that the Shaman Temple is superior to the Slayer Cave Shamans in pretty much every single way. More kills per hour and less annoying to kill them. And you can be here on task or not. The Shaman Temple compared to the Canyon is a little bit controversial. I would still say that the Shaman Temple is a bit better, especially if you're an Iron Man. 
So the Canyon Spot can get you more kills per hour theoretically with a cannon. However, for Iron Man players, you'll have to spend a lot of time making cannonballs. And you do have to factor those time in. And also the time that you might have to factor in from getting crashed and stuff is also uh, pretty noticeable as well. So yeah, it's probably still a bit better than the Canyon Spot. Maybe not so much for mains, because uh, you can just buy cannonballs anyway, so. Holy shit, I'm already 79 farming. Yo, dwarf wheat, that's so nice, man. Although, I'm pretty I'm pretty good on dwarf wheat because of Zora, though. One of my boys showed me a really interesting website. It's called uh, calcusorge.com. It can calculate how much XP you have stored in your bank. It's that simple. So, right now, I want to figure out how much herb XP I got stored in my bank. All I gotta do is check the potions that I'm making and check how much quantities that, I, that I'm gonna be making and then it's gonna give me a grand total XP at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that all in real quick. Yeah. Alright, Cadentines, I got 900. Yeah, we got 900 here. Super defense, wow. And that gives me 747,000. Total stored level. Nice, dude. 747,000, man. There's another cool thing that you can do. So you can put in your name, your character name, uh, and then it'll show you what your current stats are. Since I'm doing herb, you know, show me my herb level. 73. So at the bottom, it should tell me what my herb level will be by the end of all this. 79, dude. That's so cool. That's actually really good. Yeah, now this is what you call an amazing tool right here. Great stuff, great stuff. I will be using Calcus Source for uh, any big skilling goals that I have going forward in the future involving resources. Just because, one, it saves me a ton of brain cells for having to do it on my own. And even if I did it on my own, it's a lot slower, so the website is just going to save me a ton of time. So it's really nice to know I do have the herbs for 78 Herbler, which is a huge requirement for phase one before I move on to raids. So really nice to know that. I won't be using the herbs just yet because I want to find some time in the future to do the Narda Desert Diary. So I can uh, just have the NPC turn all the herbs into unfinished potions. That would save me a lot of time. So I'll talk to you guys more about the Herbless stuff when the time comes. So I timed 30 minutes at the Shaman Temple so I can figure out how many darts and skills I used in that time. And I did about 60 kills and it cost me 231 darts and 778 skills. So from an individual Shaman standpoint, that's about 4 darts and 13 skills per kill. If I were to get the Warhammer on the drop rate, which is 5,000, that would take me 20,000 darts and 65,000 skills. So I... I think I have enough currently, definitely in scales, but not so much on the darts. If I do end up going drier than that, I would have to definitely make some more darts. But yeah, it's a lot of uh, ammunition and scales for this Warhammer grind. Renar seed again, boys! Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, this. I, I might be able to, you know, get some solid prayer potions back if these guys keep giving me Renar seeds. Oh, too bad they don't give snapdragons. I haven't seen these guys give snapdragons yet, I don't think. Wait, do they give snapdragons? Usually if something gives Renaz, they don't give snapdragons. For some reason. Oh my god, this stone chest got warhammers, bro? What the hell, man? Why can't I just yoink the, the warhammers off these goddamn chests? What a tease, dude. What a freaking tease. But I like the lore, though, you know? It kind of, like, shows why these guys have it, I guess. Alright, so I'm out of Renars pretty much. That means I really can't make prayer potions too much anymore. So what that means is I have to start thinking about using super restores. I think inevitably super restores are going to be the main prayer potions I end up using. So, yeah, I need to start turning these into super stores and use it as shamans a bit. I need to do Tower of Life though, so I can uh, quickly get some red spider eggs. This is super fast way to get it, it's like a thousand an hour. Although this one sucks because it's going to be a easy contract reward. I don't even know what I get from these. Oh, oh <laughs> what? I got a red wood tree from, from an easy contract. I, I guess anything's possible, man. Hey. Alright, beautiful. Quest done. 
I won't need this anymore. Okay, let's test and see if I even need the diaries to get a lot of uh, red spider eggs. Because if I don't get much, I'll, I'll definitely bang out the uh, RD medium diaries real quick. Because I do have the requirements. So I need these to transmute them into the creatures I can kill for the spider eggs. And the monster you came to get here is also pretty, pretty reliable. Oh shit, is this not noted? Oh no. Damn it, man. The, the easy diary is, doesn't note. And then I can use the basket to go to Castle Wars. Yes, boys. Medium tasks done. I think that's everything. Yes, all the tasks done. Awesome, man. Okay, now I can get this noted red spider eggs, man. Feels good. I'm surprised not many people uh, do the red spider egg method here because it is absolutely amazing, dude. Even for a scrubby mid-level-ish account, you know, I'm still able to accumulate red spider eggs. 50 of them, dude. I think the average net profit is probably around 40 because I, I have to sacrifice about 13, but 40 a trip, man. It's so nice. There we go. Sunny for Herbler. Four more levels to go. For that sunny, beautiful. Alright, alright, let's go open this up, man. What is that? Ancient plate legs. Oh. I was going to do Dragon Slayer 2 a little bit later, but actually, I want to go ahead and get Dragon Slayer 2 started as soon as possible because getting the assembler would help my Warhammer grind a bunch. I would save a ton of darts because right now, a lot of my darts fall on the ground and I have to spend time picking it up, which is really annoying and waste time so if i get the assembler for the warhammer grind i'll save myself a ton of darts and also speed up the shaman killing process as well and uh yeah the assembler is really good uh dps increase because it does have the damage boost and the extra accuracy as well and another reason is that i forgot i have some wreck and hosta so i can actually just melee vorkav with it and it shouldn't be too hard to get 50 kills doing it that way so yeah i have made up my mind we're gonna work on dragon slayer 2 like right now Alright, so I'm going to use this website once again. So this time we're going to do it for smithing. I'm planning out some of the strategy, you know, to get to the Giant Slayer 2 requirement. I need 70 smithing. So right now I'm currently at uh, 65. It's 64, but that's because I haven't logged out. So I got about 2,000 mithril bars to make into dart tips. That's 100,000 experience right there. Also, I have uh, 6,775 gold uh, bars, so I'm going to put that in there as well, 380,000, and that's going to get me, ooh, very nice, dude, all the way over to 72, that's amazing, so yeah, that's awesome, awesome. Remember all the mining that I did to unlock the wise patch, well, all the ores I got from that is coming in clutch for Giants there too. So I've converted all of my mithril bars pretty much into darts. So I have about 21,800. So there is a method that you can do to speed up your blast furnace training with gold ores. And it involves quickly putting on your uh, goldsmith gauntlets right after you open the interface to withdraw your gold bars. So as you can see in this clip, I put on the ice gloves first. And then once I deposit the gold in the hopper, I quickly go to the withdraw box. And I don't have my gold smith gauntlets on. But the moment the interface opens up and I take it out, I put it on. I'll still get the effect. That way there is never a delay in the gold ores converted to bars. Because if you do it the other way, sometimes there's a delay and you have to wait. So this is a slightly a bit more XP per hour. That should get me to 70 smithing and I can make... Addy stuff. Let me see. It's Translator 2. When I quickly looked at it, it was 70 smithing. Yes, I got that now. Awesome. Nice. 55 thieving. Easy. It'll take like no time to get these last five levels. <clears throat> so based on the supplies I have right now for prayer in my bank, I have about 954 super restores. I simply just added Super Restore Potions with Snapdragons that will be turned to Super Restores and the Snapdragon Seeds that I will get the herbs to turn the potions into. So 
Each Snapdragon should give me about 8 herbs on average at my level of 80 farming, ultra compost, and never dying. So I use about 32 of these potions a day. So I have about 30 days worth of prayer potions right now in super stores. And I kill about 400 a day. So that means with these supplies I got right now, that's about 12,000 shaman kills. So I can guarantee myself 12,000 shaman kills with what I got right now. There's a good chance I'll get the Warhammer by then. Oh yes, 95 range. Oh, she'll love to have, really? That's my second one, dude. Yo, cow caught trees? I'm pretty convinced it's either head spores are actually not that rare, or the fact that cow caught trees give you a shit ton of head spore seeds. Alright, boys. Daily hard clue from the shamans. Please, give me a god dehyde top. That'd be amazing. Oh, zombie head ancient enchanted robes. Oh my god, dude. The zombie head. Can you even wear that? Wait, you can wear that? Really? Oh, oh, that's a troll. I thought you put it in your head. That's going to conclude today's episode. A lot of research has been done on the shamans, and uh, I'm feeling confident on this grind because uh, I have all the stuff planned out resource-wise. So we can go for a long time if it has to be done, you know. If we go dry, we got this. In the next episode, I hope to have Drancer 2 done and yeah, work on that Vorkath grind for the 50 kills for the Assembler. So that should be uh, exciting stuff. And yeah, back on that Warhammer grind. I'll tell you guys more about it in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you're new to the series, feel free to subscribe and uh, click on the bell. And also, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give the video a like as well. Otherwise, I will see you guys later with another episode, hopefully uh, in less than a week. Take care and bye-bye.